So recently on that point, you know, we had uh, the Jani family. There's two. One is Yadav and the other one is Kishori. Kishori Jani brought about 80 people. And Yadav Jani had about 60 people. And uh, we organized some very nice things for them. We organized to plant a new forest. And we made it like a family thing. And that uh, video is on the YouTube. You know, if you go and just say go to an institute, um, plant a tree, it will come up. And uh, after seven days, everyone was asked what was the most exciting thing you did. And they said two things, planting the trees in the brush. And second thing was making chula rotis in the brush. We had organized, we put like 10 chulas. And uh -huh. we had one elderly mataji in each from the village and each chula and a couple of students from the school. And yeah. then we broke up the groups into you know, small groups and they were all going and making the chapati. <laughs> <laughs> and even the men, the children, everyone got into it. It was like an art and crafts you know, class and everyone was having fun. And uh, one of the devotees, uh, a youngster, a teenager, he came and he was putting his hand on his stomach and going like this. He said, Prabhu, this feels so good. I said, what feels so good? He said, for the first time in my life, I made my own chapati, chapati and I ate it myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm, wonderful. So, so that, that was a you know, good experience. Mm. So, you know, Vrindavan and uh, um, the whole of Braj, but particularly Vrindavan Dam and uh, Govardhan, Radhakun, Shyamkut, Barsana, these places have so many wonderful pastimes of Radharani, Krishna, the Gopas, the Gopis, you know. And, and also devotees who come through, who have been through here. Vrindavan is a place practically every saint of India has been through Vrindavan, you know? And that includes even Muslim saints and includes like, you know, Guru Nanak. There's only one Guru, Guru Dwar in temple and that is there because Guru Nanak came through here. Tulsi Das came through here. And uh, Tulsi Das is Bhajan Kuti is there and Tulsi Das is temple is there, you know? And Tulsi Das, when he came here, I just give you some random examples like that to just see like there is unlimited examples. But Tulsidas, when he came here, he went in front of this Radha Krishna deities. But before he went, people were trying to ridicule him. They're saying, Tulsidas, what are you doing, Vrindavan? You should be in Ayodhya. You know, this is a place where we worship Krishna. We don't worship Ram here. And Tulsidas was convincing them that is they are non-different. They're just you know appearing in different forms at different times in different era. And still people were not able to, you know, appreciate and accept that. So when Tulsidas came in front of this particular deities where he was invited and all the big kind of saintly leaders were also there, at that stage, Tulsidas called upon Lord Ram and he said to this Radha Krishna form of deities that like, please kindly bestow your mercy on all of them so that they can see there is no difference between Ram and Krishna, you know. And so from Krishna's deity, it turns into Lord Ram with bow and arrow. So instead of playing the flute, that turns into uh, Lord Ram with bow and arrow. And then everyone appreciates that this is so magical how, you know, Lord Ram just appears from Lord Krishna. And after that, you know, <clears throat> and everyone was uh, peaceful and everyone accepted, you know, what Tulsidas was preaching. That was just amongst the devotees, but one time Tulsidas was also in a in a Batsas place, in another place. And you know, Tulsidas was going through that particular town, and one boy was uh, killed by the Muslims. So as Tulsidas was going past, you know, the family members were crying, and the boy, boy was lying dead. And Tulsidas said, What happened? And they, you know, they told him that he was killed by the Muslims. So Tulsidas came and practically just gave his blessings, and the boy got up. And there's no more wounds on his body and he's like as good as you know new and fresh and so when the Batsa found out he summoned Tulsidas to his court so he, when he went to his kingdom and normally anyone who went to the Batsa's place they had to bow down Tulsidas did not bow down so the Batsa got very angry and he said what is this nonsense you don't know what you're supposed to do when you come in front of a person like me you are supposed to bow down. And the soldiers were telling him to bow down. And he said, no, I will not. He said, I can only bow down to one Lord, who is my Lord. He said to Basa, you are a temporary leader here. Before you, there was somebody here. Now you are here and you'll be gone and somebody else will come. So you're all temporary fools. And uh, that, you know, 
Lord Ram is my my Batsa. He is my supreme Batsa. He's the supreme Batsa. He's Batsa of you, Batsa of everyone like that, you know. So now Batsa is getting really upset. And he's really trying to, you know, uh, threaten Tusitas. He doesn't bother him. Then he says to his soldiers, okay, tie him up with the chains and beat him to death. And then he tells Tusitas, okay, now you show me what your Batsa can do, you know. And Tulsidas said, actually, I don't have to trouble my Batsa. Just one of his servants called Hanuman is good enough for you, you know. And he calls upon Hanuman, and the next thing is the entire city, Batsa city is under attack. And the soldiers are running and telling the king, our city is under attack, our city is under attack. And then Batsa said, who's attacking? Who dare attack this? City? And they said, they're not human beings, they're monkeys. So all over the city, suddenly there's so many monkeys attacking the city and then they appear in his kingdom, in his, in his uh, palace. And the monkeys coming from all directions, you know, rampaging and throwing the soldiers around. And then Batsa understands that this Tulsidas is not an ordinary personality. He comes and bows down to Tulsidas, you know. And then he says to him, forgive me. Now I know that you are a true devotee of Lord Ram, you know. So now he takes this different position. And then he says to Tulsidas, please ask me what service I can do to you. First Tulsidas saying, I don't need any service from you. But then he says, please. Then he tells him that, look, first you will stop killing cows. And second, you'll stop harassing the devotees of Krishna and Lord Ram like that. And third, you will even name your kingdom after Lord Ram. So this is the potential power of a devotee, you know. Just like one time Srila Prabhupada was challenged by a scientist, because one child scientist, he joined Srila Prabhupada's movement in the early days, and the service he got was to clean the pots in the kitchen. And uh, his friend was very curious, so he kept in touch with him and asked his friend, his friend asked the devotee who had joined, he said, what do you do? He said, I, I wash pots in the kitchen, you know. So you can imagine, <laughs> Two scientists, one saying, I'm washing pots and this is better life and it's a spiritual life. And the other guy is thinking, this guy's gone mad, you know, because like he was supposed to be so good. So then he decides to come and challenge Srila Prabhupada. And he tells Prabhupada that like, what are you doing with my friend? What have you done to his brain? You know, and uh, the whole saga is going and then finally challenges Prabhupada. He says, so you're telling me that my friend, just by washing pots in Krishna's kitchen, he will go back home, back to God. And Papa said, yes. Second time he asked him again, getting more angry and more agitated. And Papa said, yes. I said, yes, definitely. You know. Then this guy is getting so angry and upset. And he kind of literally shouts. And Papa very calmly says to him, said, look, if your friend washes pots all his life, and if he even makes one hole in one of the pots, he will go back home, back to God through that pot. <laughs> so that was Prabhupada's point of making the, the showing the importance of devotional service with faith. Faith is very, very important. You know, all these great personalities who come to Vrindavan, they are showing that their faith in Krishna has, has been exemplary. You know, like Sanatan Goswami, Rupa Goswami, Narottam Das, Thakur, you know, uh, all these personalities. Even Mirabai, when Mirabai came here, the Muslims had planned that uh, while she's in Vrindavan, that they will put a poisonous snake, you know, to kill her because they couldn't kill her with a poison. They couldn't do this thing, that thing. They tried in other places. Now she's in Vrindavan and they sent a poisonous snake. And you know what happens? That poisonous snake comes close to Mirabai and she's like very intensively chanting. And that snake turns into a Saligram Shila. It's even there today in the temple in Vrindavan with this little snake's hood like this and a saligram is there, you know, and it's being worshipped now, you know. So a devotee has, you know, extraordinary power, you know, is extraordinarily blessed and the devotees are blessed and they do extraordinary things. Why? So that we can understand that we as ordinary people, if we simply have faith and with that faith, with love and devotion, we you know, engage in carrying out our devotional services as given to us by Sadhu, Sastra and Guru, then, you know, we, we are guaranteed to be, you know, liberated. Now, we don't want just mocks, you know. We want Prema Bhakti. There's a difference between mocks and Prema Bhakti, you know. And sometimes even in, um, generally in the Hindu culture, we say, oh, 
somebody has passed away, then we say the energy of Atma is Santi Mare. What is the meaning of Santi Mare? You know? When the person was living, there was no Santi. Now we say, Santi Mare. You know? And what is the real meaning? There's no real meaning to that, you know? But the thing is, what is Mox? The devotee doesn't even want Mox. Mox means that you liberate me, but then I don't have any more connection with Radha and Krishna. You know? It's like, I, I come to you guys and say, okay, now give me moksha, I go away, and then I don't have any more connection with you. Or you go somewhere where you love people, but then you say, okay, I'm going to moksha, but then I will not see you anymore. You know? Mm -hmm. That is like in simple terms what moksha means. But real thing is prema bhakti. Prema bhakti is very unique because when you do prema bhakti, you become eternally connected to Radha and Krishna. And when you're connected to Radha and Krishna, you're also connected to all the gopis. You're connected to all the gopas. You're connected to all the manjaris. You're connected to all the leelas that are going on in the universe. You know, at any one time, there is so many leelas going on that we cannot even count them. Every leela that Krishna has performed in Vrindavan is going on right now in one planet, another planet, another planet, simultaneous. You know? And that is why we say that Sravanam, Kirtanam, and Vishnu Smaranam. What does it mean? Sravanam, listen. Then Kirtanam, that you repeat. And the Smaranam, that you remember past times of Krishna while you are chanting. Why that is important? Because the leelas that you will remember most are the ones that you actually most connected with eternally. And those are the leelas that will reconnect you to Krishna. So you may be attached to Dhammadar Leela, or you may be attached to Kaliya Leela, you may be attached to some other Leela. That are the Leelas where you are continuously traveling with Krishna and his party and doing these pastimes, getting pastimes. You have some role in that. So that was Swaran is very important. When we chant, our consciousness should be so deep that we should not be thinking of multi-million things other, other than Krishna and his pastimes. And that is why it's recommended that we chant the Holy Name early in the morning. You know, and in Gita it says, what is night time for human beings is, not, is day time for sadhus and what is vice versa. So why it is said that? Because you see, when humans are sleeping, the whole world is more or less like blessed peace. And at that time, your concentration is unique. You know, if you used to get up at five or six and you're chanting at six or seven, nice. But then you try on your days off, instead of sleeping longer hours, or sleep lesser hours, get up at two, get up at three, get up and chant for a few hours, very peacefully and very intensively without thinking of many other things. You have Krishna's book, Krishna Lila, and whichever Lila you like most, you read and you chant. And then you, while you're chanting, you remember that Lila in a form that you may be telling to some children in a school or on a Sunday, Sunday class or something like that. And then you'll find that you know, your chanting will become so much more unique. At a, chanting has to be so good that at a certain stage, you know, chanting becomes so intensive that you don't feel pains, aches, and bodily features also. You know, There are sadhus here like Vinod Baba, Ramesh Baba, the, the real true saints here, they start chanting at two in the morning and they continue chanting like three, four in the afternoon. They don't eat, they don't drink, but they are so effulgent. You know, and they have so much sakti and they are able to speak such amazing, you know, um, spiritual things that just rocks your mind. You wonder, how is it possible this person knows so much? Or how is this possible as every answer? Sometimes when you go in, like I've been to Vinod Baba with several people and we go in and just before the person starts talking, mm -hmm. Baba will give them the answer to their question. This is the power of the Holy Name, you know. Like Gaurakishwadas Gaur Babaji was not so highly educated, you know. He could hardly read and write, but he was appointed as a guru. So many people were very, you know, curious that how is possible this person can be a guru. So simple people would go to question him and the uh, kind of uh, scholarly people would also go and question him or try to have a dialogue to ridicule him sometimes. And Go Kishodas Babaji would come out with such amazing answers, with such amazing quotes from the Sastras, it would baffle the scholarly people. And uh, they would come out, and Prabhupada explains also, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati has explained that this is why, because he is so connected with the Holy Name. Connected to the Holy Name means you are so connected with Krishna that in such times, 
the holy name will dance on your tongue and speak things that you would otherwise not even think of. So this is very special. It's like in the Bhagavad Gita, you know, the, there are four primary slokas in Bhagavad Gita. And in, in text 10, 11, it says, Tesam evanu kampartham aham agyana jam tamaha nasayami atma bhavasto jnana dipena bhavasta. You know, jnana dipena bhavasta. Like say we're celebrating Diwali time, we're lighting a lot of lights, but what is the real light? You have to understand what is the real light? What should be the real light of Diwali? Or what should be the real light of Govardhan Puja? As every festival, we do a lot of lighting of lamps. These lamps are just kind of metaphors just to, to remind us that the real light is has to shine from within, which is already there. You know? And that, that, what is that light? That is the gyan, the knowledge that is already there. You know? We have to bring it out through the touch of a sadhu or a guru or sastra like that. You know? And that makes all the difference. So Diwali time, we suddenly celebrate, have a lot of you know, fun, you know, distribute a lot of sweets, you know, light a lot of ghee lamps. But remember, there is one very important lamp that you have to let shine, that is from within. You know? And Krishna says, Kyana Dipena. Is, is there several slokas in you know, says, he said, I will give you, you know, I will give you the, the light. I will give you the torch. I'll, I will light the torch for you. I'll light the lamp for you, whereby you will you will actually rise above the bodily platform, you know. So <clears throat> if, you, if you take example of Narutam Dastakor, you know, he was surrendered. And he has so many wonderful experiences in Vrindavan. Now, I'm taking Narottam Das because he's only a few hundred years ago. We're not talking about 5,000 years or before or even 500 when Lord Chaitanya was here. But if you take Narottam Das, Thakur, just a few hundred years back, and then I'll give you some example of recent day ex- experiences. So Narottam Das, Thakur, when he comes to Vrindavan, he was a son of a king. He was a prince, actually. you know. And when he was 14, Lord Nityananda came and blessed him and said, look, Narottam, get up. Go and take a dip in the Padmavati River. Why Padmavati River? Why not Ganges? Why not Yamuna or other place? Because Lord Chaitanya had requested Padmavati to take a special gift for and save it for Narottam Das. That is to give him the blessing so that he could rise and shine with that torch that was hidden within himself. You know? So when he comes and uh, Padmavati you know, comes and manifests herself and tells him that like... Lord Chaitanya has left this gift for you and she gives him a lotus golden flower. Not just an ordinary flower like this. He's a lotus golden flower. And when he takes the lotus golden flower in his hand, that turns into a small boy, a golden boy, and that boy walks into his heart. Can you imagine what that must be like? You know? that a, a flower that is golden flower turning into a golden boy entering into Narathama. And after that, Naratam Das is just buzzing with uh, spirituality. He's buzzing with the holy name. You know, he's in ecstasy all the time. And then he, he's been directed through his dream. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu guides him through his dream throughout his life. You know, dreams are very powerful uh, agencies for us, you know, to get directions in life. You know, in all, all, all sorts of challenges, they are very, very useful. But one, we have to understand and, and practice how to remember our dreams. And two, we have to learn to pray right before we go to sleep so that we can get a direction, you know. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu blessed Narottam because Narottam would be chanting, dancing and always going to sleep thinking of Lord Chaitanya. And he would be asking him, what am I supposed to do now? I'm only 14 or 15. What am I supposed to do now? Now this challenge is over. That challenge is over. What do you want me to do? And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would come and guide him. And one time... Uh, he, he was asked to come to Vandavan and he was told that you go to Lokanath Goswami and you take initiation from Lokanath Goswami. When he arrives in Vandavan, Susanathan Goswami is gone, Rupa Goswami is gone, you know, so many other great personal personalities gone and he is crying. He's rolling on the ground and crying. How am I ever going to do anything here without all these, you know, great personalities who are with Lord Chaitanya, you know? And as he is crying, and he meets an elderly person who had met Lord Chaitanya, you know. So he's trying to give, give some 
some comfort to him and he stays with the boy because he could see that this young boy is very extraordinary. He just looked like Lord Chaitanya. He's tall, he's golden complexion and he's chanting and he's crying and he's asking about Lord Chaitanya and asking about Sanatana Goswami, Rupa Goswami like that. So in the evening time, they're lying down and Narottam is just gazing at the stars, thinking of Lord Chaitanya, that why you brought me here? You know, what am I supposed to do? And next thing, what he sees is that Lord Chaitanya is appearing in person. Lord Chaitanya, Nityananda, the six ghost swamis, the entire Kirtan party. You know? It is said when Lord Chaitanya was here, he had seven Madanga players in his Kirtan party at any one Kirtan time. And he had 21 Kartal players. And then there were dancers. And then there were singers. Like, so you can imagine how magnificent that Kirtan party must be. You know? So they all appear. And then Lord Chaitanya comes and embraces him and gives him his blessings. And so does Lord Chaitanya. And then one by one, the six Goswami is giving blessings. You know? So he is saying this. This is not in his dream. He's just lying down and looking at the sky, thinking, and the Lord appears. You know? And the elderly person was witness, and then they all disappear. And then the person, elderly person comes and bows down to Narutam Das, and he says, thank you so much for your mercy. Without your mercy, I could not have seen Lord Chaitanya again. You know, so this is just one example of Narottam Das Thakur. Madhavendra Puri, another example. When he comes to to uh, Govardhan, and um, he thinks that in this temple there is some very nice kheer, and uh, you know he's just a mendicant. Nobody knows that Madhavendra Puri is somebody very special. Madhavendra Puri is one of the gurus in uh, our Bodhi Vaishnava Sampradaya. You know, his Guru Maharaj was Lakshmipati, and then he initiates uh, Ishwara Puri who then actually initiates Lord Chaitanya, you know. So, Madhura initially has desire to eat some kheer, but then he thinks, oh, this is a desire, I should not be thinking like that. So he goes and sits under a tree, you know. In the meantime, Krishna from his plate steals a bowl of kheer and puts it under his dhoti. And then when all the plates are gone, just imagine Krishna doing that. And then he calls upon the priest and he says, look, I've hidden a you know, bowl of kheer, take it. And give it to Madhavendra Puri is out there. And he describes that he's sitting and you know. And then this priest goes out calling out, is there anyone called Madhavendra Puri? Is anyone called Madhavendra Puri? And finally gets to Madhavendra Puri and he says, here the Lord has sent some kheer for you. You know. So Madhavendra Puri is excited but is also now feeling sad that because of his desire the Lord had to do this for him. You know. Just see the exchange between a, a pure devotee and, and, and the supreme prophet. You know. The Lord is going out of his way you know, to, to act in such a way. Why? So that we can understand that if we become pure, then we can also have connection with Krishna. You know, Sometimes we say, why can't we see Krishna? But where is your purity? What level of purity do we have? What level of chanting are we doing? What level of honesty and sincerity we have to, to see Krishna? Do you really want to see Krishna? You know. So it's not like when you say, why can't I see Krishna? That is simply our ego. You know, We have to go beyond the ego. We have to come on the Brahma Buddha platform, you know. That means you have to rise above all the three modes, passion, ignorance, and goodness. You have to rise above that and come onto a spiritual platform, you know. And then we should, you know, intensively pray that Krishna gives us his blessings. You know? Madhavendra Puri is just one example. And then he gets this, uh, in his dream again, he gets this uh, Krishna coming and telling him that uh, now you had your key. Now you've got to do some homework for me. He says, I am in my deity form hidden in the Govardhan and I am suffocating there for many years. Now you get me out of there and establish a proper temple for me. <laughs> so this is pastime between devotees and the Lord. You know? The Narottam does the same thing, pastimes. You know? And Madhavendra Puri actually, he is the king pain of who, who brings Krishna Bhakti into action for devotees. You know? There is a sloka which says, Jai Sri Madhava Puri. Madhava Puri is Madhavendra Puri. Krishna Prema Pura. That means he was so much involved in Krishna Bhakti. He was doing so much, you know, he has so much prem from Krishna, you know. And we can understand that because of his love, Krishna had to steal some key for him, you know. Bhakti Kalpatarura Teno Pratham Ankura. Bhakti Kalpatarura means like this devotional service is like a network. It's a very special network and it's spread very nicely by devotees. And by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya or by mercy of Krishna, you know, and Radharani. And he's saying that 
Bhakti Kalpatarura Teno Pratham Ankura. Pratham is the foremost Ankura, foremost you know, person who actually brings Prem Bhakti to all the devotees. Until that time, it was very philosophical, but then he actually starts, he takes the knowledge from his Guru Maharaj and starts putting into practice and teaching everyone how Bhakti is to be practiced, you know, and how we can reach to Prema Bhakti step by step, you know. So this step-by-step -step description of Prema Bhakti, how to reach there, is given very nicely by Prabodhananda Saraswati Maharaj, even Viswanath Chakravati Thakur. These are some of the great personalities in you know, our, you know, Sampradayas, and they have given us so much, so much knowledge and so many examples whereby we can actually, you know, be inspired to take some serious action in our life so that we can actually see Vrindavan from wherever we are, you know. And then when we come to Vrindavan, we will not see the trash on the streets and we will not see the pigs running on the street, but you will be able to see beyond, deeper than that, you know. You will have to get together rasa, the, the rust, the juice of Prema Bhakti, you know, it, it's all best and related to our, our our sincerity and purity in chanting the holy name, you know. So, <clears throat> please, you know, try, try to improve your chanting, you know. Name Ruchi, Jivedaya, Vaishnava Seva, these things, these three things are very important. Name Ruchi is a topmost thing that you must chant and you must endeavor and uh, it's like if you want to, if you come, say like for the first time, if you are seeing a sitafal in your life or a mango in your life, unless you eat it, you will not know the taste. You know, so it's chanting. Unless you chant pure, purely, you will not understand the actually rasa, that the juice that comes from there. You know, that actually takes you to so much more, uh, a higher platform. In uh, Chaitanya Charitamita, in, in the Madhya Lila, in chapter 19, text, I think, 153, it is explained that this chanting is so powerful. It's so powerful that at a certain stage when your chanting becomes pure, then the, the chanting, you know, develops a creeper which carries the soul straight to Goloktam, you know. Now, Goloktam is not an easy place to get to. Only devotees who are perfected, you know, Prema Bhakti seriously can get that. And it's said that Within moments, it surpasses all the material planets, the material universe. It goes beyond the Vajja river. It goes beyond the Brahma Jyoti, it goes Brahma Loka, Vishnu Loka, everything. It just goes past everything and takes you straight to Golokdham. And what is special about Golokdham? Golokdham then explains the next verse is that there's every moment, every next moment is so much more transcendently pleasurable than the previous moment. So as you go into next moment and next moment like that, there is no question of remembering the previous moment and, and the joy you had there because the next moment is so much more joyful that, you know, you, you will not take your, your attention away from that. That is, you know, Krishna Loka. That is Goloka, you know. And that is where we want to be. Who doesn't want to be happy every moment, you know. In the material world, you can only be happy while you're eating a samosa or a gulab jambu. But how many samosas and gulab jambas can you eat? How many movies can you watch before you get bored? You know, anything we do in material world is temporary, is limited, and it's so, so much illusion. You know, whereas if we can go beyond this, and we experience, we can even experience on this planet while we're chanting, and we learn to chant purely, and you start rising above the bodily platform. Nobody will allow to tell us. Nobody will have to tell us that now stop, you know, please or start. You know, we just will not stop. All these Babajis who are, there are many hidden Babajis we don't even know of, but I met by Krishna's mercy, some of them in the jungles were living there. They are completely above, you know. One sadhu, I asked him, so how do you survive in the jungle? He took a little bark out like this and he said, this is what I eat this much once in six months. This is some kind of very special bark of a tree that they can eat once in six months and it, it helps them to you know, survive. Just like the people who are going, astronauts who are going the spaceship, they don't eat the salad and sabji and everything. They live on pills, you know, and for months they are surviving on pills. But this bark is so special that it gives all the nutrition the body needs. And then he says, we don't sleep, we don't need to sleep. We are engaged in, in you know, your personal service, we are engaged in Nami Ruchi. You know? 
and then they experience so many wonderful things only when you see sadhus and saintly people like this then you can understand that vrindavan is ramya sthan it's not an ordinary place no? and we have to look at the song but here even the little girls and boys in the villages they sing that i'll give you one uh, example before i invite questions that like this was very personal and very transcendental you know i was in vrindavan and uh, two little girls came as the car got parked these two little girls came one must be like seven or eight and the other was like 10 and uh, i was thinking okay they're going to come and ask for donations because that's what they do they train the children that baba de do baba de do you know kuch de do so they got out and they came close to me and i said so normally children i don't give money i will give them something to eat or i'll ask them where are your parents so i asked her, this girl so where are your parents you know where is your mother i said mother mata ke is ka hai you know she said you don't know our mother is radharani and your mother is also radharani you know wow you know so i thought wow this is a new thing i'm hearing and they're going to ask for no they didn't ask me for any donation they started glorifying radharani so nicely i was i was completely lost for few minutes that these little girls can glorify radharani so nicely and they can chant so nicely and then they they glorifying krishna and they are singing like avo avo re gopal maine lassi banayi badi pyar se you know that i have cooked i made lassi for you nicely they are singing everything from morning to night that what they going to do for radha and krishna you know they were like two little preachers on the street they they just had such immense uh, energy that they were glorifying radha and krishna and telling me that radha rani is your real mother you know Yeah. it was just just wonderful and then they described and they said so i said mujhe radharani kaam milegi i will have find radharani mm-hmm. they said radharani is watching you all the time she is just waiting for you to be completely you know detached no more attachment this little girl is telling me no more attachment in hindi you know there should be no more attachment of any form no family attachment no duty attachment no this attachment you should be just completely thinking of radha and krishna then when you are ready then radha rani will bring krishna she won't come alone to come again to you at that stage she says to me again remember seven eight nine year old girls are telling me this they are little gopis you know and uh, she is saying that when you are ready then krishna will come and krishna will glorify oh you are such a nice devotee but then she said like this but don't get puffed okay don't let your ego come out because krishna is telling you are a nice devotee you should say that i am so fallen that i am not even fit to be a particle of dust on your feet on your toes and when radharani sees then she will understand when you say like that radharani will understand that now he is fully surrendered then she will signal to krishna and say okay take him back home this doesn't happen every day to everyone it happens once in a while you know to some people and when i experienced that i understood that like there are so many devotees in this guys like they just say that every night radha and krishna are dancing you know so in different places different leelas are going on in the braj every day you know so we can understand from such simple things that vrindavan is not in an ordinary place akbar can come and get elevated you know the saintly people will come and they will get blessed in different ways you know mirabai is Uh, they take on mira by the snake turns into a saligram you know like that akbar decides to actually surrender you know batsa surrenders so these are just a few examples you know there are so many wonderful examples of so many great they do each goswami six goswami each of the six goswami they have performed such wonderful pastimes narottam was just over blessed i would say that like every day was getting blessings you know <laughs> and he was with jiva goswami and every time he would have some great experience he would come to jiva goswami to tell him and jiva goswami would tell him so this is what happened right <laughs> you know like he, he dreams of radharani in in his dream radharani is telling him that we are making kheer and you also start making kheer and krishna really likes kheer and kheer should be offered at 4 in the afternoon so he is running to jiva goswami to tell him about his dream and so as, as he gets to jiva goswami jiva goswami so So you're going to start making kheer for Radharani, for Krishna from today. 
So this is how great these uh, Goswamis were. They could foresee, they could see everything that was going on, you know, because they are special, special agents, you know. So both Mindavan, Govardhan, all these places, there's so many wonderful things to be experienced, you know. And that's why I say that, like, when you come, come for a longer time, you know. We need time. We need time to go and see, you know, experience different things in different places. You need to meet some of the sadhus locally. You also need to spend time in Govardhan, chanting, time in, you know, other holy places where Krishna performed pastimes, sitting there chanting, talking to the local people, and then you'll be surprised at what you heard. It's just a tiny fraction of what actually Krishna did in that particular pastime, you know. There's so much, so much, you know. Even Dinabandhu Prabhu, who is very, very famous for all this, he's written books, but in his books he writes that whatever, I, whatever I'm giving is hardly 2% of what is existing out there, you know. And if you really want to experience devotional life and devotional, you know, um, <clears throat> get devotional blessings, you have to spend time here, you know. And uh, time is short. We all know that time is running. Time doesn't stop for anyone. Time keeps clicking, you know. But we can come and do, uh, spend time here. And then like many years ago, Ramesh Baba, he told me that, that um, I'm going to conclude with this. He told me that, Aap sab log chor ho. Aate ho, chori karke chale jate ho. And I was saying, why? Why is he telling I'm a thief? What have I done wrong? <laughs> you know? So I asked him, Baba, please explain. He said, Aap parikrama karte ho na? Barsane ki parikrama? Govardhan parikrama? Vrindavan parikrama? Why do you do that? Because you want to get blessings. So you do a little walking and you take blessings and you walk away with it. And then you might give some donations in the temple or you might give something to some Rajabhasis and think, oh, I've done my part. But he said, no. One of the most important services, he says, you have to take a jaru and clean the streets of Randavan. Mm. Go and water the plants. Because it is said that every tree, every branch, every leaf, every dust particle, they are very special. You know? They are kalpavriksha. They, are, they have this energy and strength. Even a dust particle can bless you. So that you will rise above the bodily platform. You know? There are many examples of how dust particles have delivered the bodies. There are many examples of how leaves have delivered the bodies. Many examples of how plants have delivered people. What to speak of sadhus? Right? Who can imagine in this material world that plants can deliver you? You know, they can talk to you. Who can understand a dust, dust particle? One dust particle can rise and free you from your material bondage and give you an eternal spiritual body. This is available here. It's not available in other parts of the world. That is why Vrindavan is so important. That's why the Braj is very important. You know, what you can get here, you cannot get anywhere else. You know. Now, if you were to say that to everyone that look in England for one hour, you'll get. $50, but if you go to run down, you'll get $5 million. Who will not run? Right? That's giving a mundane example. The, in reality, that's what you're here. You cannot buy a moment of life that's gone for multi millions of dollars if you have them. You, know? you cannot even buy one moment. You know? And <clears throat> if we just work on the basis of karma, then another body is guaranteed. Who can guarantee you that you don't have to take another body? That you can have a spiritual body whereby you can travel like Narad Muni or Hanuman, you know, like that. We have that choice. It's in our hands. Either we stay attached to our conditional life and conditions of life and make, keep making excuses because that's what the mind does, you know. And we keep making excuses and life will be gone. And then you'll be thrown into another body. Not, you don't even know what body. You know? On the contrary, if you practice this uh, process of prema bhakti, deriving prema bhakti, then only in this lifetime you'll begin to see. You know? You'll begin to see. And when the time comes to leave the body, you'll also know beforehand that now it's time to leave the body. You will not be bewildered. You will not be scared. Hmm? There are many examples, you know. In our family, we know that our grandfather, he was able to tell three days before that on the third day I'm leaving. 
on the second day I'm leaving in the morning, he said, okay, I'm going to leave today. You know? He wasn't going on a train journey from Porbandar to, you know, Mumbai or something. He was leaving this planet to go to Polokdam. And he was able to tell. So what is our condition? Ask ourselves, ask yourself your question. Where do I really stand? Am I going to be in that position that when time comes to leave, I will know for sure. And then I want to take another birth again, you know. Serious question to end with, but it is important. You know? Please take our lives very seriously. Don't waste a moment anymore. You know? Wherever you are, can think of Randava, think of Govardhan. You know? It's like Narottam Das came to Vandavan and went back because Lord Chaitanya told him to go to Kathura and preach there. So he was preaching there, but his, his mind was always in Vandavan. So, Prabhu, thank you so much. I'll stop here. If there's any questions or you know, comments, we can take a few thank minutes. It's really uh, enlightening uh, uh, words, Prabhu. Uh, very, very... And they are also realized... I've seen you in action in Bantavan, and uh, I know for a fact that uh, what you say is uh, actually in your heart. And this is why it comes across so wonderfully and has a big impact. So thank you, Prabhu, very much. And yes, please, uh, questions uh, from the devotees. Hare Krishna, Chikan Prabhuji, Nabi Prabhuji, Jenti Mataji, Hare Krishna. Such a wonderful session, Prabhuji. You so you know so much. And mm -hmm. as Prabhuji was saying that whenever we are there with you, you are full of energy. You've got all these stories to tell. And it's just mind-blowing how you know so much with so much energy and so much love with, for everybody, including Krishna, Radha. So it is wonderful to see you. And hope that next time when I come to Vrindavan, yeah. I want to stay longer there. This is my aim. So I hope Grada Rani Ji grants me that wish that when I come again, I will stay a longer time in Vrindavan, Prabhuji. And I want to hear your stories, go with you to see whatever you do and learn from you. Hare Krishna. Actually, Dr. Dr. Ji, you're always welcome. Yeah, I know. Know. Um, Lina and Sohini, who came with us, Nani, when this time, they're actually coming to Vrindavan uh, on 22nd of January, Trikalpavu, you don't know, uh, until 31st of January. So they're going to spend uh, 10 days um, in Bandavan. Just hey, well. that's what they're going to do. So if you are free, you maybe you can join them uh, if you want to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, wonderful. Yes, yes, excellent. Yeah, we shall let us see. Yes, yes. Let us see. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhuji. Wonderful session. Uh, Hare Krishna, everybody. If anybody has any questions or anything, please feel free. Leather Prabhu. Yes, Leather Prabhu. Okay. You're muted. Bye. Bye. Unmute. Okay. 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 Feelings and realizations from visiting uh, the now and down. We are under the guidance of Tikal Prabhu, uh, which obviously comes down from Parampara, Nalavapa, and everybody. And uh, we are so fortunate to be in this special family. Uh, yeah. And hopefully, we can, uh, you know, after understanding and realizing a little bit from personal experience, etc., become serious in our lives because. Uh, uh, life is short, obviously. We, we would like to carry on being with the devotees eternally. Uh, but that's very rare and difficult under present circumstances. Although I'm retired from my own experience, I can say I, I've wasted a lot of time. But uh, it inspires me to see Tikal and the family and everyone, you know, especially Pangavidya and so many wonderful devotees in our own families that have made success of their life. Uh, so that we can, even if we can uh, imbibe 1% of their uh, sincere, serious devotion, 
I mean, Trikal obviously I can write a, a life story for for a month. He's done so much. We are so fortunate, definitely. So yeah, uh, so simple question to Trikal Prabhu. Uh, just advise a little bit. See what happened once uh, uh, during our visit to Vrindavan. Uh, Vrindavan dust from uh, one of those places where Krishna's pastimes are, besides our temple. There are so many other places. So I collected little dust. You know where they roll down on the ground? Which is that place? I forgot now. That yes, Tan? Yeah, yeah. So I collected little dust, you know. I got carried away. And then when I went came to Ujjain, then I said, oh, well, well, I'm not qualified. Why did I bring this dust? It's so special, so auspicious. So then I sent it back with one devotee. And uh, he said, yeah, he just, he's done it. He's put it back. Uh, so I hope uh, it's definitely put back, you know, because uh, one day, so what's, what's your advice on now and dust? Should they, are we allowed to take it with us sometimes or not? The only restrictions are on Giriraj, not okay. on the dust. There is no oh. restrictions on dust. Because, okay. see, people walk, walk bare feet. I'll just give you a practical example. People walk bare feet in Vrindavan. So they're okay. carrying their dust from the Vrindavan all the time. Yeah. You're sitting in the car, you're going to Delhi, you're carrying the dust with you. Right. The, the ones who are very dedicated, they will not wear shoes or slippers in Vrindavan. You know? Okay. Yeah. So there is no restrictions, as far as I know, with the dust. But there is restrictions that if you want to take Giriraj out of Vrindavan, yeah. Then you have to take permission from uh, Gurujans or from a Brajavasi. If you, oh, are, okay. if you have a Guru, you take an initiation, uh, take an initiation. You can ask Guru for permission, or you can ask a senior proper representative for that permission, or you ask a Brajavasi. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. But otherwise, uh, no, there is no taking Braj, uh, Braj Raj from here is not an offense. Okay, thank you very much. Jolly. In fact. You know, there are devotees who will make small bottles of Braj Raj, small bottles of Yamuna gel, Radha Kun, Shyama Kun gel, and they will make a, like a little gift item for this. And then when devotees go from here, they give it to them to take it with them. Because these are, like we said, you know, uh, the Braj Raj itself is, is, uh, is like a Kalpa Riksha element. Hmm. Right. That if you carry one particle and if you have a certain spiritual desire, that one particle can fulfill your desire. Right. If you take one leaf from a tree anywhere in the world, you can be praying for a spiritual you know, uh, success in one way or another. That mm -hmm. one leaf can give you that boon. Right. You may take it away from the tree, but that leaf has that power. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so take take these things very seriously. It's not an ordinary dust particle that you pick up on the streets of London or Washington or you know. Sure, uh, sure. Same thing with the plants. You know. right. See, it is said that when the whole universe is annihilated, when Lord yeah. Shiva takes action, the whole universe means all the planetary systems are annihilated. At that stage, Vandavan Dam is not annihilated. It doesn't go, it doesn't disappear. Okay. So this is, there's a big difference between Vrindavan Dham and other planetary parts. Wow, that's very special. Wow. Yeah. Whoever is on the spaceship on, uh, on the bridge, they go to Golok Dham. Right. Even a dog. It is even said that the animals that are born in bridge are not mm -hmm. ordinary jivatmas. They are just born in that particular body to go through a certain kind of austerity because being in an animal's body or plant's body or insect body is not an easy thing. It's pretty austere, you know, mm. like, but they are born here because they have to pay off certain dues. And then after that life, they don't have to take any other life. Like it's described in the Bhagavatam that you get from aquatics to plants, to animals, to, you know, different animals, and then you become a human being. They don't mm. have to do that in one. Right. A dog will go back home. You know, a chip tree as, uh, will go, a squirrel will go, back home. A monkey will go back home. So it's, it's a unique, unique place to be. Mm. Yeah. I hope that helps. So quickly, uh, what uh, they always emphasize that we should be very careful when we enter the Holy Dharma of Vrindavan. 
uh, not to commit any offenses, you know. Uh, but that should apply to us all the time, even if we are not in a down. They say that uh, even Prabhupada said that uh, all other temples are also extension of a down in one yes. sense. Yeah. yeah. So um, when you come to Vrindavan, you should come with this consciousness that I just want to do maximum spiritual activities. Yeah. Right. It's very important that you come with this consciousness. So then there's no question of committing abroad. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so others might have some questions. I'll, I'll ask later on if there is any time. Yeah. Ian has any questions or comments? Hello, Paduk. How are you both? How are you all? Uh, just a quickly, obviously, with all the experiences we had with you in Vanda and all the years and all this, obviously, the last one, I remember one particular session when we went to see Babaji in Govardhan. And the Manohar Baba, Baba. Yeah. yeah, I think he was about 90 something. Yeah, and this Baba, probably by speaking, is has been living almost all his life yeah. on the uh, on the Govardhan, you know, yeah, I think on, husband, on the Giriraj yeah. itself. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's close to 90 years now, but very active, very lively, and amazing amount of knowledge. Yeah, when uh, obviously I was with you and uh, <laughs> Couple of guys with me that time, and uh, obviously, I think I was only there for I think an hour or something. We sat down with him with a bit of uh, discussion and all that. And something is always, I think, something unique which I can't get out of. You know, every time I think of him, and I think the guy, the knowledge he had was unbelievable. You know, so I think that last trip. Still, I think it's on my mind. It lingers me. I uh, look at these pictures and I think, oh my God, uh, there was something which I can't forget. But and anyway, like I think everyone else, everyone who's been to one down with you or around, we've got a lot of memories. We've got a lot of things to say. And I just quickly wanted to say this because I have to leave the meeting in a minute or so. Um, the boys are going home. And uh, I thought, before I say that, I want to say happy Diwali to all of you guys. Uh, hopefully, I need to catch up with you guys shortly. And then, uh, so on. So, all the best. Hari Bol to everyone. And especially, I have to leave. So, I just wanted to quickly say Hari Bol to everyone. Rade Rade. Yeah? Rade Rade. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Rade Rade. Rade Rade. Thank you. Mm. So, Prabhuji, if we have no further questions or comments or anything, uh, we'll, we'll call at this session to an end. Let the Kripal Prabhu and Nabi Prabhu call to an end. And then uh, we'll have another session soon as well. If anybody wants to say anything, please unmute yourself. Asmuk Pai? Unmute yourself, yeah? Thank you. Final, Thank final question. Yes, sir. Jessica, it's so nice to see you after like a several centuries. <laughs> it has been so long, so long, by, uh, And just seeing you and hearing you preach reminds me so much of my brother Mohan. And you actually, Indy was just saying, it looks so much like Bai. You're and twins. You don't you know. You are twins, definitely, <laughs> absolutely. There's no separation for you. Yeah. Uh, it has been an absolute wonderful session, and the satsang is so much needed. Mm. And I think with, with the last session we had with Naresh by um, Krishna Das, we miss it. Yeah. Um, although we have a temple in Newcastle. Uh, it's a Punjabi temple, but it's not the same feeling. But this brings back so many connections, so many linkages that we definitely miss. 
so Naresh Bhai, uh, with the Institute of Vedic Studies, and yourself, Bhattu Bhai, please, can we request more? Yes. We should have a regular, at least a monthly, and then we can increase duration. Absolutely. Yeah. It would be wonderful. And it's yeah. so wonderful to see you. We'll definitely, we'll definitely take on that, and uh, I would like to say, say thank you to Nabi Prabhu for, because he's the one who's actually organized our program. I'm just sort of putting a few bits here and then, and keep on pestering him day and night, and then I phoned Rikal and said, "Look, you better be ready." And he had a storm a few days. He said, "My line not not connect." I said, "Whatever you do, you have to connect. You know, we're not going to let you off." <laughs> It's amazing. The day before yesterday was heavy storm. We lost Wi-Fi. We lost uh, telephone connections. Oh, there was no electricity. Oh, <laughs> no water. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. But it's all back. You know, Krishna keeps reminding us that don't be dependent on these elements. You know, right. You're not going to take electricity back with you. <laughs> mm. oh. No. Why don't we um, schedule another session on tenth of December? Four, four or five weeks. Four weeks. Uh, what's the date today? Four weeks time. Yes, tenth of December. You probably say. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. If everybody's happy with that. Yeah, yeah I'm okay with that. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Okay. So we'll, we'll send out the links again near a time. If there's yeah. anybody wants anything specific, uh, they want to ask the call uh, mm. or, you know, they want anything specific, uh, the, 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 then please let us know or, you know, we'll, you know, you have connection with the call or Nabi or myself and just uh, we can ask him to do a session on anything you want. Um, yeah. We have to take the opportunity while we have this, you know, this is, this is very precious time. Um, and my request to all of you is if you get a chance, uh, like Prabhu you said, and Chicago, uh, please go and visit Vindavan, but spend time in Vindavan and uh, beg mercy from Radha Rani that she can help us all. And, you know, at the moment we have the luxury, Trikal is there. So we went yes. recently and, you know, we just went there. We flew to India, Delhi. We didn't go anywhere, yeah. straight to straight to Vindavan. Perfect. We, we didn't do anything. He organized everything. And it was such an amazing, even after two, three weeks we've been, my mind is still in Vindavan. It's not, not <laughs> kicked back in the UK. So it's like so beautiful time we had. Um, and so, you know, if, if you're free, any of you got going to go uh, holidays or anything, you know, think about Vindavan. Go and spend time. And you right. know, the call, no, let him do the schedule. You'll have fun with him. Mm, definitely. He's got, a, as I said, Tons of uh, spiritual uh, pastimes to share with us. Hmm. Yeah. So finally, can I, I, I can say that I can see Prita is getting excited. I think it's coming on the next flight. We have many mountains you can climb here as well. <laughs> yeah. hey, I, I did that this year. That's over with now. Now we stick to flatland. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No. Happy Diwali, Badaina. And uh, hopefully you all have uh, something sweet to eat and uh, uh, best wishes for the coming year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tikal Jai. And Nabi Jai. Thank you. Hare Krishna, everybody. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Tikal Prabhu. Thank you. Thank everyone who's on the 